Given the high inflationary pressures right now, what's the risk of this shock that you're talking about actually getting to equities? Well, we've obviously already had a big adjustment in equities. Um, unsurprisingly, really, given that we'd had one of the strongest ever recoveries from a bear market when you went go back to early 2020, and valuations were very high, particularly for very long duration stocks. So as the Fed and other central banks started to guide towards lifting interest rates earlier than had been expected, I think it was quite inevitable that you get some kind of readjustment down in valuations. Remember, as recently as last June, the consensus was expecting no rate rises this year by the Fed and perhaps just one at the end of ne next year. So that adjustment has already happened. I think the key thing for equities from here, though, is how much any of this shift upwards in interest rate expectations and indeed in financial conditions will hit growth because that's going to be the key determinant of where equity markets stabilize. What's been really interesting to see in the last few days has been how, despite the fact that we see this huge glo global sell-off, especially focused here in the US, emerging markets have been doing relatively well. Today, for example, MSCI LATAM was actually rebounding a lot. Is that mm. a, a consequence of them having moved faster than developed nations? I think ultimately this has a lot to do with valuations again. Um, markets that are very highly valued are most vulnerable to rising interest rates. The US equity market had hugely outperformed emerging markets and other developed markets like Europe, really for a decade. A lot of that reflected better fundamentals, but it also reflected a much higher weighting in growth sectors in the US, particularly in technology. And as interest rates have shifted and we've seen a rotation away from growth-led markets to more towards more value-led markets, you started to see a bit of a rebalancing with parts of EM doing better, parts of Europe doing better. The UK market, for example, which is very heavily weighted in value sectors like energy and banks, is actually flat on the year, so it's outperformed quite sharply. And this all reflects, I think, the exposure towards growth on the one hand and value on the other. Do you see that trend accelerating into 2022? How does the outlook for EM look for you, particularly in this era of policy divergence where we see China starting to loosen? Yeah, and it's another very important point. We have to recognise that the US is, is exiting uh, this period of emergency policy accommodation on two fronts, both by raising interest rates and beginning runoff of its balance sheet, but also uh, fiscal policy at the margin is tightening, whereas, as you say, in China, you're seeing an easing of policy. And that's also true, at least on the fiscal side in Europe as well. So these developments in terms of macro policy, coupled with the difference in underlying valuations, the US market being more expensive, uh, I think is going to contribute to at least a narrowing of the relative performance between these different markets through the course of this year. And we do see more opportunities in value sectors and in the markets that are more levered to those, um, because many of these uh, industries which have been underperformers for many years are starting to see much stronger fundamentals. Energy is a very good example of that, with high, and we think sustainably high now, energy prices for some period of time. Yeah, let's uh, talk a little bit more about that. Uh, where do you see the oil price topping up? Well, it's likely, uh, we think, in the short term to be heading uh, higher towards $100 or, or, or more. But I think the broader issue here is not just the short-lived squeeze that you might get, and obviously that may also depend on geopolitical developments that you've been covering earlier in the programme. But fundamentally, there has been... a underinvestment in energy and other commodity assets for many years following the collapse in demand uh, after the financial crisis. The decade before that had seen huge investment in commodities, and so there hasn't really been a big incentive to invest in commodity infrastructure, storage, transportation for a very long time. And as we've begun to see global demand accelerate uh, from the recession triggered by the pandemic, uh, 
we've really got a fundamental supply and demand imbalance. And that could continue for quite some time, particularly as the world uh, focuses on energy transition uh, to reflect uh, the demands of decarbonisation.